Hello you guys! So how are you doing with the Tulip Challenge? I hope you're having fun and enjoying yourself. A few of you have asked for me to jump on here and maybe do even some uh, more expansions on these Tulip series uh, palette that we put out in the monthly watercolor subscription. So if you're unfamiliar with the subscription, this comes to you out every month with inspiration cards, watercolor paper, and brushes and accessories, different things every single month for you to have fun and join the challenges with us. So these are just items that were painted with this set that came out. The last video I did uh, this one and kind of expanded on some of these that were in the kit and told you about, we talked a little bit about getting this kind of a style and uh, right down to the back washes and things that can happen and how to kind of like solicit that. And then we also did uh, this, which is the mixing chart from the kit and talked a little bit about what else is in the kit. So you can go back and review those videos when you have time. Also some techniques that we're going through videos here on with my Mary Blue. So I kind of went over wet on wet, glazing and lifting, but we're gonna do a little more with that today, moving forward, and it should be a lot of fun. So in my kit, I have three papers left that I haven't used yet, and I have the Rubens 50, the Windsor 25, and then the Jacks 100% cotton. So um, I thought we would kind of just experiment a little bit with some different things. Maybe just jump right onto the cotton. I prefer that, but we can also um, maybe go over some shapes here on the practice paper. So let's take the Rubens 50-50 and I'm just gonna grab <clears throat> probably a flat brush. This is a size 12 uh, angular brush that I have available on the website. Just gonna wet these. And it's a really great brush because uh, they come in sets, so you get like three different sizes, and the two sets are similar but not the same. Like one set has a very small angular brush in it, um, and the other one has more of the larger ones. I myself don't really use small brushes that much. Um, I use more like these kind of the green set, which is the detailed brush, or these pointed rounds, which are also really nice. So if you're looking for brushes, I have these approved. They have not lost a hair. I'm really happy with the performance of them and they're great for beginners because they won't run away with you like some of my other uh, more advanced brushes from Escoda, which I absolutely love, but I don't really recommend them for beginners because you don't know how you're going to evolve as a painter and those are more specific brushes for specific styles. But these are good all around brushes. So I'm gonna be looking at today some pretty basic shapes, but uh, I'm just gonna be playing with color, you know, so my colors can mix they can do whatever they want here I'm not gonna be really picky uh, just very very loose and I'm thinking in terms of uh, Kind of color block shapes, so you're gonna see me paint just a few rough ideas and Perhaps even you know mix some colors together now, of course, if you want really, really detailed uh, instructions and you're so, so lost, then I would suggest that you look at some of my um, watercolor for beginners classes. Because if you're looking at this and you completely don't understand what I'm doing, that is a good indication that you need one of those classes. But what I'm playing with right now is the colors. So I'm using this really, really nice basic paper. So this isn't like an archive quality paper. It's just one of those papers that um, you can just practice on. So if it's in your area and it's a nice, um, it's not 100% cotton, but it is partly cotton, right? 50%. If it's in your area and it is a good price, I recommend that you, um, you know, that you grab some because that might work out really, really well. So what I'm doing is I'm blocking out some shapes very loosely with a little bit of water. And this is how I would kind of play around with my colors for a larger piece. So I'm mixing some of the orange with a little bit more of the yellow just to give me a little brighter mix. And I'm being very, very loose and forgiving with 
uh, this. And of course, I'm working with a very large brush on a very small sheet of paper. I actually prefer it that way. It keeps my style a lot more loose. Let me get you in a little closer. So you can see I've just got some basic, really rough shapes here. I think even I wouldn't mind adding some texture with a towel. Don't use toilet paper. Use a towel, preferably cotton, so that you don't leave any residue on your page. And toilet paper is such a waste because it just, it's a, uh, you know, it's just a resource that even if it's recycled, we use enough of it. We don't need to throw it into our watercolors. So I've got some basic shapes here to, to work off of. And then I'm thinking maybe of adding a little bit of blue to my orange, just to kind of maybe give myself a little bit of a, a shadow. Let me get rid of this piece of paper. And if you notice, I'm painting right off the page and that gives me continuity um, I find that a lot of times when you're painting small, you can get wrapped up. And like I did on this one, one thing I didn't like about it is I forgot to paint off of the paper. So my, my leaves on this just felt like they weren't fluid enough, which bothered me. I feel like tulip shapes should be much longer, you know, and, and kind of more wistful. And I felt when this dried that I needed to go back in and kind of do some, you know, twisty, turny shapes just to bring that more to life and not let, make it look so short. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention here is the way I do that after things dry is, or while I'm painting, is I go off the page on my paper. Um, and even if you have your paper taped, which you wouldn't on practice sheets, but if you did, you could, uh, you know, still just go right over the tape. So I'm adding a little more of the Prussian blue just to give me some pops of color, a little more movement. But did you see how I mixed that really neat gray shade and it kind of like went in there? And I'm, I'm doing that and adding a little water and a little bit more darkness here. I like this angular brush for that reason because I can kind of create these neat, strict, more strict shapes and fine lines. Then I'm going to mix that what's left on my brush with a little bit of the Monet Green. That is the handmade watercolor from my line of watercolors and perhaps just dilute it and work a little bit not super super strong just so they don't overwhelm things and i'm looking for right now is how maybe i might want to shape some really loose leaves like maybe i'll come down before this dries and just bring out some wet shapes here like this and that's what i use these great big brushes for is um to go in and just kind of, you know, do some fun things. I love how this, you can kind of twist it in and out of your shapes like that. And look at how cool you get when you want to fill area. You get these really neat organic shapes. And this is mixing in really nicely with the yellow. So I'm just going to like encourage it right there. I don't want to make it too green. So let's rinse our brush off and just clean that up a little bit and then give it a little bit more so it just blends off. And then if I feel like it's just too solid, I'm going to just kind of draw back some of this just so that it's not too solid. I want to like a washy kind of effect on this light layer. And then I'm going to take uh, just some of what's left over and I'm going to paint right through these leaves just to give it a little splashy effect, just like that. So this is more of my personal art style. Um, I don't do a ton of this in the, uh, mostly in the courses because it can get a little bit long and lengthy when you're just here on YouTube. And I don't want to overwhelm my beginners by getting you really, really lost. But if this is your style and something that you're interested in, then certainly join me in the classes and you know make a comment below and let me know what you think and what, what you love and uh, what appealed to you here. So at this point, you can switch brushes. You can um, 
I'm going to use this little sponge thing. These are available on my website too if you're interested. These are uh, jackswatercolor.com and they're just wiping sponges. They don't leave any residue on the brush and that's why I like them. And it's a different wipe than on my towel so I do keep my towel here too as well. So now where I'm at is I'm in a very loose place. I'm kind of allowing it to dry and now I'm going to start mixing in a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the green gold for those lighter areas. And I want this green gold, oops, I want my green gold to be a little brighter. So I'm going to just kind of pop it in there. Look how pretty that is. And what I'm doing is I'm finding the stems. This is a really small piece of paper, so we're going to keep it real loose because I'm using a very large brush. But I'm finding some stems and adding in just little pops of this beautiful uh, green gold color, which when you when you mix it with the yellow, it gives you a little bit more bright uh, color. And then when you mix it with the blue again you get something else it's kind of really interesting to use and then I just added another little glaze to our pot of some of this warm yellow just to make it brighter and it is mixing with the green because it is still wet so I can always dry it off if I don't like that look and I want to just add some of that brightness um, I think actually I'm just going to tap in a little bit of the yellow throughout the painting just to kind of bring that forward and now this is where it starts to get a little more tricky right because now you have to make real decisions and at this point it's really not dry enough for me to make all the decisions I'd like to here however with that being said it's still you know it's it's decent and I don't really mind uh, having this part be very very wet so I'm gonna take this brush and I'm just going to lay in some neat shapes following the fluid lines that I got and like looking for edges and by looking for edges here I'm actually able to define some of the sides of the petals so that the eye reads it just a little bit better and this is how I kind of go at my florals in that lovely loose way where I don't kill the floral you know I've done a lot of painting in my life and a lot of times uh, especially when I did um, commission work it was so detailed and so architectural so it leads me into this space now where I just love the flow of watercolor I love things not being um, really strict on how they have to look and I'm a big advocate of being as creative as you can be and fluid as you can be with your shapes because you know paint right off that page and that will help you get that better look and not be like looking like your page has limited you you don't ever want to look like your page size has limited you all right, I love that. That to me is just happy, happy stuff right there, for sure. So you remember, you don't really ever want to get to a point where the watercolor is so wet that it, um, it gets in your way. I'm actually erasing this green here just by swiping back and forth with a little color and a damp brush, getting that petal back in. I love this, uh, you know, the transparency of the colors I picked out for you guys to use in this kit is so, so pretty. Now once this dries, um, I can go back and swipe even more color or I can dry it back with a towel and just kind of enjoy that texture as it dries and then go back and add a layer, you know? So now we've got kind of like some shapes here that we can decide, we can go in and decide to darken up if we want to. Um, I had that one leaf, remember, that was here. I think I'm going to go ahead and, now that this is a little drier, start putting that back in. Maybe adding a little blue to it. And you'll notice very often 
I will just mix my colors and I just do that because usually the colors I'm working with they combine so nicely that I don't really worry about them. This paper is real small so we're going to just kind of dry it back a little bit. What I'm looking for here is a nice careful balance of very very fluid lines coming off of these really bright bold things and again this is not the finished product this is a play time right so I'm not looking to you know come out with a masterpiece here this is where I'm gonna make all my mistakes and get my messiness going and see what works and what doesn't work and what shapes I prefer you know and even what colors like here I'm using kind of like a sappy green I mixed with the green gold and the Prussian with a little bit of yellow you know even throw in a little bit of the orange to make it a little more um, a little more olive so mixing is of course very very important knowing your mixes a little bit of the Monet green mixed with the Prussian gives you a little more bluer green which is also in our tulips which is really pretty and I kind of like that feel there. Now this is of course going to be getting super super messy because it's so small but I really like where it's going and I really like the look of the layers here that I have. So again I'm just kind of playing with color, inserting, this is called charging, so I'm just charging in some of the colors and going over some of these areas with a nice little glaze of another color. We'll take a little more of our yellow and just insert it into some areas that we want a little more boldness, a little more brightness. Take a little more of our orange which is our dominant color and we're just going to work on defining those petals just a bit more almost with a dry brush effect so we have some texture. A little bit of the rose color. Dry brush again. It's a just enough dampness on the brush to pick up the color but not so much that it leaves like a sopping mess. And that's kind of where I'm at with this right now. I think I'm pretty happy with it. And I think this should be in front, so we're just going to do that. Now I've lost like my, because um, this page is very small, I have lost those bright stems that I was playing with before. So if we take the green gold and mix a little yellow with it and then we take a little bit of the Prussian blue we're going to get this bright green color which I like and I'm just going to try and stamp in a few of those stems one more time just so that the eye can kind of like register where the petals start and stop but this is so abstract at this point that it really doesn't matter. All right, I think I'm going to stop there with this one. That was a really good practice, and that's kind of my process in how I come to um, some of my more advanced artwork. So what we can take from here is the mix on colors, the play on shapes, if the brush worked. If it didn't, I love what the brush did with the stems. And, and even if I take like a little bit of the green gold and a little bit of that green, and I think about where the stems are, and I just want to put in um, the appearance of those stems in here I think that's a really good way to add texture to our vase and give that that appearance of transparency then I can go and take a little bit more of the yellow and then just kind of liquefy it in a couple areas see so it's not so stark and that's like just a personal choice, you know, whether you want to enhance some of these or not. Just by having this piece down here, it really gives me what I need visually 
um, on the glass. But I can also dry the glass. So you see how flexible things are. And you can go back in and just kind of build up some of the stems or wait for it to dry entirely. Mix a little bit of your bright green. And just while it's still damp, insert it so that you do have those strikes in that vase. Then let it dry. So there are ways to control it, in other words, right? So like here, if I feel like this is too thick, I can add a, a little wash of, of um, a little wash of clean water on my brush just to break it up and give some more light back in there for texture. So that's lifting, which is something that I talked about on the card. And think about if I want this flower in front or in back of that. You know, and that's kind of like one of those personal choices. I almost feel like it's kind of neat having the flower in back of it, but I feel like the flower is so bold, it might want to come into the front. So let's see what, how it looks if I just go ahead and play with putting a base on this flower that's over the green. And that sits over the glass, just like that. It's kind of like stamping it in. I like that. That looks good. So then maybe we'll take a bit of the yellow and mix up some bold color to create a stem. And there we go. We're going to leave it like that because at this point it, the paper is so small, you know, I don't really need to, to go any further. And then once that dries, we can decide if this is too much of one shape and you want to either add a pop of color over it or you want to try and direct it. I probably, once it dries, will direct it into two or three different um, leaves as well as these, like these areas here. I may as well take the same brush since I'm working with the same brush. So I would just, like once this is dry, just take some of our darker greens here that I have, just random mixes on my palette and uh, decide like if this is this flower or this is this leaf here then we just add a little shape and you see what that does just by adding a little glaze of a shadow it now cuts cuts the differences so that we can see where they're coming and going and maybe this is going to be here and then the other one sits in the back and then this shape here is the stem so to make the stem more pronounced we're just going to you know kind of tap in a little bit of color straight out and if this is the stem, again, see if it's dry enough to tap that in. And I'm just enhancing some shapes and getting rid of others. Now, you can see right there, this one is still a little too damp for it to read right here. So I'm just kind of tapping in. Um, some of the shades and you can see the glaze what it's starting to do is define one from the other it kind of cuts one from the other another way that you have to do that too is just take a damp brush and this is lifting so this brush is great for lifting and I'm just gonna keep wiping it wiping it on my towel lift wipe lift wipe lift wipe because once it's wet it will lift back as much as it wants to, depending on the color you used and how staining it is. Many of my colors are very liftable though. They're great for lifting. So now I see I have a little more white area in there that is gonna dry back. And even here, if we want to lift back, we can just add some water. And as big as this brush is, I can lift this area to scrub it a bit, which is amazing that, you know, the 50% cotton, because the cotton's in there, it does give you some scrub ability. Not going to be as great as the Jack's cotton, right? Because that's going to give you the most scrubbing um, ability, but it gives you some. And these are just like little layers you can create in your watercolor painting. It's just by lifting back areas next to other areas because you can always put it back in. Once it's dry, you can just 
change the color, alter the color. It's going to lift some of these areas out. And that's kind of, in my mind, see, I'm doing it intuitively. And that's, I think, what confuses people um, when they watch me paint my, you know, bigger pieces or my more professional pieces that aren't geared to beginners is I'm doing all this intuitively and that's something that comes with time and experience it's something I can teach you and techniques and you can watch because it will like expand your mind a little bit into thinking what's possible but at the same time sometimes it can be overwhelming because you're like how did I make that decision it's intuitive it's like me just kind of getting with a painting and feeling it as I go along and liking or disliking what I'm seeing and knowing that, um, you know, with experience, you learn that you can lift back, let it dry and just do something else to it, you know, depending on the paper. So the tools that you have, the watercolor, the paint brushes and the tools you have directly affect whether you can do certain things or you can't do certain things. So that's neat. So we're going to let that dry. And um, once it's all dry, it's going to give me a lot more play in kind of defining what I want here or keeping it, you know, keeping it where it is. I am feeling right now that I really love what this line has shown me here. I think it's really interesting and I can make these leaves look like so much more than they are, right? Just by adding these twisty lines. And I really love that. I love that texture. See how that's working? Let me get you in a little closer. So see like right here, how rather than just one shape, I'm able to just kind of go over with a little bit of a dry brush and give it that definition of light versus dark and what that does to our vision moving forward. Same here by just kind of building up some color and glazes. See that nice line? And definition here you keep it from having just one shape it now has several shapes and little layers which is a little dry brushing and it just to me it's intuitive whether it makes sense or not you know I'm just kind of playing with it and this will be ultimately just one of the versions that I play with when I'm just painting you know just something fun like something I would do in my sketchbook um, Although I get people all the time that want to buy these because they are less expensive than my official paintings, but they're still original sketches. So if you're interested in buying them, they're available when when they're when they're available. They're listed on my uh, Jack's watercolor website, or sometimes at JacquelineJacks.com. So you can look around a little bit for anything. You can always send me a message too if this is something that you really love and you want to bring it home. Um, we can either do a print or possibly make, you know, the sketch for sale. But I just love doing them this way. I think they're so much fun. So see how, how that's changed. So if you like go back in the video and you look, you're going to see a clear difference between what we had and what it has turned out to be. And we could have stopped at what we had, but I wanted it to read just a little bit more, you know? Not that I don't like that watermark there. I just kind of am playing with the pop of color. So this is this area is really nice and blurry. Now I like it that way. You can do it different ways by letting it dry more. So if you want more of a um, a detailed look or something that translates a little bit more I don't know like e like not so loosely then you could let the paper dry before adding in a few minor details maybe here or there and playing with that too isn't that pretty I think it's really pretty I really like it it's got like that fullness looking it doesn't look flat my petals all look like they're starting to bloom which is a little different shape than the typical but I mean and then if you name it tulips people are like oh yeah I get it I get it all right so there's another one of my uh, little attempts here as I work through the process of just playing with colors just get up and spend what this was about um, 
30 minutes you were here with me just kind of playing with this and going back and forth between glazes and removing color and adding color and letting things dry and developing shapes and petals. This was really fun and I think you learned a lot. Very much like, you know, how I got to these kinds of glazes and shapes here with these. It's just layers, you know what I mean, as things evolve. And sometimes they move real quick and sometimes they move a little more slowly. Um, just depending on the artist and you know what's happening with your painting on that day you know some of them you're going to charge up with water and let it push let that water push away the watercolor to create those lovely bleeds and blends you know and like you know develop some interesting shapes perhaps that look tulipy but have a range all kinds of things go in watercolor and that's this is a medium you can't do this any other way you know it's just beautiful and so so much fun all right guys happy painting i hope you're enjoying the subscription and you stick with me here as we move through i think these are just so fun and i'm hearing from you that you're really really enjoying them so i am keeping them going for now i hope that you enjoy this particular subscription as we go into spring and many many more to come have a great day bye